Let us stand to receive the family. I need your attention in the back, please. I need your attention in the back. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days. I full of trouble. I am the resurrection and the life, said the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my redeemer liveth. He shall stand at the last day upon the earth. And though after the skin worms destroy my body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold, and not another. For it is certain that we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days full of trouble. It cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Lord, make me to know my name and the measure of my day. What it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, Thou hast made my days as a handwriting, and my age is not nothing before that before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains brought forth. Even thou hast formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turneth man to destruction and say, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years of thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling thereof, there is a river, the stream, where all shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right earth. You may rest in the presence of the Lord. All over this room, let's put our hands together and give God praise. Come on over now, bless God, but it's really not. Somebody say something to God with you now. I don't hear nobody. Somebody say something to God with you now. We give God glory. And we give Him the honor. And we give God the praise. Come on, praise God for the life of this precious one to us. Somebody give God praise for His life. Four days ago, we sat in this position, not in this place, but we sat in this very position. We asked God to give this family strength that they could make it as they buried their dad and their, and their grandfather. And so here we are 364 days again. 
asking God to give them the same strength that he gave them 364 days ago. And if you know him, like I know him, you know he's able. Have you got anybody here to know that God is able? So him, I would just say, ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. For he is willing to aid you. And he will carry you through. Amen. We come to give God praise for the life of William the Tran. We thank God for giving us such a precious gift. The Bible declared that every good and perfect gift comes from above. He was not a perfect man, but he was a perfect gift. He was a perfect gift to this family. And not only that, but he was a perfect gift to this church. He was one of the our, our, he was one of the main vessels, main veins that pumped blood through the heart of this church. And so, family, I come to let you know that your hurt is our hurt. We know how you feel. Your loss is our loss. But in the midst of all, we give God the praise. A couple of housekeeping rules. I know somebody's not going to obey by them. But if you have a cellular device, you have a cell phone, any type of cell, any type of uh, cellular device, please, ma'am, please, sir, take your device, put it in the vibrate position, or please turn it off. Amen. We come to give God praise for the life of this individual, so we don't need to hear your we don't need to hear your ring. And uh, we come to give God praise for this life of this one. The family has labored, and our job, our job, my job is to, if you look at the program, the program says order of service. And where there is no order, there is disorder. So my job is to make sure that this service is executed in the order that the family has chosen it to be executed. Please, ma'am, please, sir, if you do not see your name on the program, and you just have to see you just have to say something. Don't go to the family. Come to me. And as nicely as I can, I'll tell you no. <laughs> if there will be any changes, the changes will be from the family, not from you. Now, I had this problem last year. You know, uh, let me say this to you. The family chose who they want to sing. They didn't choose you. They might not like your singing. So please don't jump up and say, I just want to sing a little bit of this song. Now, if you do, I will be kind enough to tell you as politely as I can. No. So the family has taken their time. They have paused from their pain. They took a, a, a brief moment from their brief to prepare the program the way they desire it to go. Now, we're going to follow the program as printed. We're going to have a selection by Deacon Johnny Gray. And then we're going to have our scripture reading, our Old Testament reading by the Reverend Minitary. And our New Testament scripture by Minister Ann Evans. And then we're going to have the prayer of comfort by Reverend James Brown. And then we're going to have a poem by Sister Hope Patran. In that order, please come.
Amen. Can I get an amen out there? Amen. He's everywhere. He's got some places. He's everywhere. I'm going to read from you the, from the book of Job, the brevity of man. Job is a real man. He asked these questions. He was a native of the land of Oz. Oz, oh, you see, right? I think I can say it right. You see, amen? He was a negative, negative. Oh, native of the land of Oz. And he was a real person. Don't think that this is a real, this is a real person. He's asking these questions. He concerned about the brevity of man. Amen? amen. And we all should be concerned about what will happen to us after death. Amen. Mm. All to be concerned. Amen. Just not having a good time living right now. But we gotta leave here. We gotta leave here. This is not our home. We got to leave here. And we need to prepare to leave. God has given us our time. Amen. And it's up to your choice, your choosing. I'm gonna be reading the scripture out of Job the 14th chapter. And it reads, 14.1, man is born of a woman, is a few days and full of trouble, y'all, y'all hear that? He cometh forth like a flower, and is cut down. He fled also as a shadow, and continued not. Now here for always on earth, Amen. And does not open thy eyes upon such a one, and bringeth me into judgment with thee. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No, not one. Mm. Sin, his days are determined, and the number of the months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he can not Pass. We cannot pass what is before us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to skip to verse 7. For there is hope of a tree. It did be cut down. It will sprout again. Everybody can know a tree. You cut down a tree. You think it's dead. Anything you know, some sprout be coming out of it. Amen. And that tender branch thereof will not Sin, it's sin. We are not in the Old Testament. Then we live, we'll live again, and we have the right choosing. Mm -hmm. Though the root there are wax, wax old in the earth, and the stalk there are die in the ground. Yet through the scent of the water, it will bud. It will be the scent of the water and bring forth boughs like a plant. Bows like man, man. Another question. But man died and wastes away. Yet man give up the ghost. And where is he? Where is he? When he give up the ghost. Amen. And you also want to know if a man died, I always need to know that, especially unbelievers. Yeah. We believers already know where and, uh, and God has answered that for us. Verse 14, if a man die, shall he live again? Shall he? Yeah. If you think about it, <laughs> all the days of my appointed time yeah. will I wait until my change come. Mm -hmm. If a man die, to my, my uh, word to you today, if a man die, will he live again? No. That's what you're to, that's personal. Yeah. That's what you got to ask. Amen. Amen. A man died, you're going to die. We're going out of here. We'll all be coming up at the same time. If not, we're going to die until Jesus comes. Amen. 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 So, Jesus, if a man died, my word to you today, if a man died, will he live again? Purpose in your heart that if you choose heaven, we will. See our loved ones again. Can I get an amen? Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. amen. Thank you.
Old Testament, the New Testament reading, and it will be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And it reads, for we know that if, if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with pain, eternal in the heavens. But in this, this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan. We groan in this life. Being burdened. We be burdened sometimes in this life. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that has brought us for the self-same thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the thing done in this body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Right. The word of God to the people of God. Remember this. Absent from his flesh and body yeah. is to be present with the Lord. Visualize that. Use your imagination. We are with the Lord. Hallelujah.
forget. Soon and very soon. We too must take journey if you tarry not. God, we are going, the family is going to miss our brother. But in the same breath, God, we must make preparations also to leave this world. And to go and be in your presence. Realizing, God, that you have told us that we were headed for, we are headed for a land where troubles have ceased. God, we thank you. Look like God, man that is born a woman. It is said already. It's a few days and they are filled with trouble. But God, we bless your name. We bless your name, God, for what you have done for us. We bless your name, God, because you told us that we can escape trouble. Well, God, we stand here today in the name of Jesus. Not because we've been so much better than Brother Trent, but God, it is said in your word that you have set our day. And we can't go past that day. But God, we just want to bless you. Help us, God, to know that we must love each and every one of us. That we must even love our enemies. That, that Father God, we must help everyone. That we must even help our enemies. Even if we see that a uh, burning down on heaven knows we have got to go and help out God. Amen. And we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for giving us your son, Jesus. Amen. We thank you, God, for his dying for us. We thank you, God, for giving us your Holy Spirit. That when our heads are hanging down low, we can, you can pick us up, God, and you will pick us up. And God, we thank you for your ministering angel that you have assigned to each of us that they will minister to us that are as of salvation. Oh God, we thank you right now. We thank you, God, for being able to stand and, and ask to uh, say this prayer of comfort, God. Because God, in time, like me, we need your comfort, God. And we can't do without you. God, God we thank you. You God, we just want to say thank you. But God, we praise your name. We love you, God, because you first loved us. God, we ask you to give Brother Terry, Pastor Terry, a word for us today. God, in the name of Jesus, let us know that soon and very soon that we too must do the same thing that Brother Trent has done if you tear it on. God, give him a word for us today. Not only that, God, but give us and this here today. God, help us not to have dull ears today. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.
mercy and his commitment with what he has. Your grandfather, and you're gonna think of you're gonna get in some tough spots 
and some tough situations, but you're going to remember the knowledge that he instilled in you. You're going to think of the funny things that he said. You, you cry on that, but you'll be able to smile after a while. So let me suggest that you put your hand in God's hand, and he will carry you through. We're going to move on here now. We're going to have solo by uh, Brother Chester Baysmore, and then we're going to have remarks. The remarks say two minutes, limit two minutes. I always say limit one and a half minutes. That way you'll sit down in two minutes. So when we open up for remarks, we're going to open up for remarks. Please, now, please, sir, be mindful. Number one, of what you say. Because some folks don't know what to say. So please, ma'am, please, sir, the family is going through, so be mindful of what you say. And number two, be mindful that there's somebody that wants to come behind you. And number three, be mindful that I will sit you down.
start with our pulpit, if there be any of the, the pulpit that desire to come and give expressions, please matter, even in the pulpit, please adhere to the two minutes. Some of you probably don't know Long Pine got his name by having one pine tree. <laughs> Literally. I grew up in Tarboro on Church Street. Some of you know my grandfather, Nat Craig. The irony is my grandmother's name was Rosa Davis before she became a mother. Irony is that their mother was named Rosa Davis. But that is not what I wanted to share with you. I was listening to the whole poem and I summarized everything I need to say. God willing and was the epitome of a man of integrity. He was an example. And I have to just share with you all my story. As I mentioned, I was running up and down Church Street, playing yeah, street lights. <laughs> Moving to Long Pine in 1974, and only did we have one tree, we had no lights. <laughs> I'm going to give you all over the early old people to give a reference country, dog. Yeah. I was nine years old. I was terrified. I was so terrified that one night we heard some noise. And my mother didn't know what to do. We went outside and we saw William. Mr. Book, Brother Chester, that song was right on, great segue, because it was something about the way Hope stated, we would raise his voice, but it was just the way he spoke. 
He said, y'all going to be all right. <laughs> Next thing I know, they had a street might put in the backyard. <laughs> they gave so much comfort and peace to my family. Real quick, I'm going to be mindful of my minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> Matthew 22, verse 36. And they said it was the Lord that tried to trick me. He said, what do you say is the key master command? Jesus responds, love thy God with all thy heart, all thy body, and all thy mind. But then he said the second one. Was to love God. And I want to stand here and, and, and offer condolences, but thank you for Tran family because they have been the epitome of Matthew 22, verse 39. Thank you all for loving my mother, loving my family. May God continue to keep you on this time with the Lord.
found that Joe Glennock for a lot of years and got to know him and hearing a lot of the truth today. And I'm going to get right on with it about my little experience that I had with him. Um, and it, it brought back memories to me years, a few years back at my job. Uh, they put in force about uh, wearing a badge. Went so many years and didn't have to wear it. And Neil called me off to the side and said, Where your badge is today? I said, I let them go. And they enforced that when you don't have your badge, you can't wear it. Learn how to follow the rules, regulations, and instructions. A lot of times raised up flesh. I told him, I said, the first one to come in without the badge. I said, You mind your business. He said, I'm getting a chew right now. He said, go home and get your badge uh, and come back. Either go home if you don't want to get your badge, don't come back. <laughs> I said, I'm going to do my job and you do your job. Well, when I left out of the parking lot, I said I wasn't coming back. But the long ride and found my change my mind. <laughs> Next morning, I come in and I was like flesh again. I'm speaking to him. How you doing this morning? It was doing fine. We've been speaking ever since. I guess that was our way of saying that uh, our differences have been settled. But what we got to learn how to do in life is mind your business, do what you're being told, and be on good behavior. And I thank you for that. I'm going to tell you this real quick. Went out to my last job. And had the same running with a young man, was giving him some instruction to follow, gave him that feedback, and I got a chance to see myself again.
And I stand here today on behalf of the class of 1972. Um, I was hoping that uh, Wayne Taylor would be here, because he usually does this. How about come on back, please? <laughs> My wife, Cynthia, we all moved down from New York down here. And we used to be at Canole in her house. And I used to love how she barbecued old pit pigs. <laughs> and William always treated me kind. First of all, my name is Brother Williams from Fairfield, North Carolina. Under the Church of God in Christ, my pastor's Pastor Joe E. Gary. I've been known in this family for 48 years. I've been married in this family. And all that time, many times I came here preaching through the years. Uh, Melvin, Dina Patran, and Al Bell, and all of them, they always treated me so kind. And I had an accident, and I hurt my shoulder, I cracked a bone in my shoulder. And I think I told Bell, and I said, I don't think I'm coming. But I was so troubled by it, and my spirit was tearing me up. I said, Lord, I got to go. Yeah. And I was taking a quarter, quarter of pills. And I was, it got me here, and I thank God that I'm here. Amen. But in all those years, 48 years or more, William have never said a harm word to me. Never. Even when I was in my sin, before any of us got saved, he never said that. And I was laughing. I got to make the family laugh one time. I was laughing coming down the highway. And I looked at my wife. I think we was in Smithfield. And I told her, I said, honey, you remember 
when we were staying down by the courthouse in that apartment upstairs in 1975. And me, Melvin, and uh, Maxie Knight, all of us, were drinking. <laughs> yep, stay together, we were drinking. Yeah. Some of you drunk too, so that's okay. And so what happened was Maxie, when my wife took pig feet, he put the whole pig feet in his mouth and said, spit up the phone. I don't know how he did it. <laughs> but there's one thing about William that I'll never forget. Once he had enough, the first thing go on him is his legs. <laughs> he had enough, that's it. But I said this to the family, you know, God bless you. I know what you're going through. We're praying for you. You know, I'm going to our hearts go out to you. God bless you. And I thank you for allowing me to be a part of this family. Good to see you today. And it is his year. It is his year. See, I'm praying. 
God praise all over this room. Thank you, each and every one of you, for the kind words that you have spoken. But let me say this to you. They don't just need those words today. They need those words in the days to come. Uh, everybody show up during the week and everybody show up for the funeral. But when the last car leaves, that's when it really hits. So please be mindful of this family. Get telephone numbers, get Facebook pages, and connect with these, these the children and the grandchildren and the brothers and sisters. Connect with this family, amen. Because they're going to need you. It does not end today. It starts when the last person leaves. So be mindful of them. Don't stop praying for them. Continue to pray for them. We're going to receive Sister Clara Grace. She's going to come with the church resolution, and then she's going to come with the acknowledgement and the obituary. We receive Sister Clara Grace as she comes at this particular time. Fulfilled our task on 
shall be observed for 30 days by the presence of the covering on the pulpit be turned on the black side in the church service to acknowledge the passing of our esteemed Deacon William A. Bertrand, and that a copy of this resolution be given to the family as a copy kept in the church archives. In the words of John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. Be in peace in the everlasting love of the Lord. Respectfully submitted on this 14th day of January 2023 20, on behalf of the officers and members of St. Paul Mission and Baptist Church, 900 North Street, Tarboro, North Carolina. Reverend George A. Terry, Pastor. The acknowledgments of family of William Alvin Neal Bertrand appreciates your compassion, comfort, prayers, and numerous acts of kindness extended to them during their time of bereavement. Please continue to keep the family in prayer. The Bertrand family will greet family and friends, Eastern Star Missionary Baptist Church. The family received many cards. Each and every card is so appreciated. The cards will be read in the privacy of the home, but the family has decided to share these cards in our hearing. With sympathy, with loving thoughts and deep sympathy from Dr. Donisha Moore and staff, Twin Drive, Harbor. From the St. Paul Mission and Baptist Church Mothers and Deaconess Ministry, may God comfort you. Our deepest sympathy. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. To the Betrayan family, we, the W.A. Cotilla High School alumni, offer our deepest sympathy in the passing of your loved one. May their memory and the love of God comfort you and sustain you. Men and Pitt Pierce, Chairperson, Benevolent Committee, Committee. Remembering someone special, your loved one left a legacy of special things like these, acts of kindness, friendships, and happy memories. Your loved one touched so many lives and they it comfort you to know that special memories they're born with others, with love, the morning choir. The obituary. In my father's house are many mansions, John 14, 1, 3. William Alvin Neal the train departed this earthly life on Monday, January 2nd, 2023. He was born on February 15, 1954, to the late Melvin Bertrand Jr. and the late Rosalie Davis Bertrand. Educated in the Edgecombe County School System, he graduated from Carver High School, class of 1972. Having worked in the textile manufacturing industry, he retired after 45 years from Leonard Mills as a production supervisor. He was an active and faithful member of St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church, where he grew up as a child and later became a trustee, male chorus member, pastor, a committee member, and a deacon. William was a true definition of a people person. He was known as a hometown historian. 
If you didn't know someone from Harbor and surrounding areas, you could rest assured that he did. He never met a stranger and would do anything for his family and friends. He loved to cook and often visited people during their time of need and just to maintain their lifetime connections. He has undoubtedly left footprints and memories on the lives of everyone who knew and loved him and will truly be missed. We can find comfort knowing that he is now with the Heavenly Father and reunited with his loved ones above the clouds. Survivors include his children, James E. Pippen of St. Petersburg, Florida, and William B. Bond Walston, Harbor, North Carolina, brothers Melvin Betran III, Harbor, North Carolina, George G.T. Betran, wife Vivian, Raleigh, North Carolina, sister Mary Betran Shaw, husband Wilbur, Princefield, North Carolina, special nieces, Shelby Betran, Nightville, North Carolina, and Hope Betran, Princefield, North Carolina. Siblings, Carnell Drone, wife Patricia, Newport News, Virginia, Gloria Howard, husband Ray, Raleigh, North Carolina, Ethel Drone, Wilson, North Carolina, grandchildren, Alexis Walston, Zakevio Reynolds, Francis Pippen, Lonzo Pippen, and great granddaughter Aspen Jones, and a host of other nieces, nephews, relatives, and special friends. Thank you so much for being so attentive to the request of the family. I heard someone say that Neil mind his business. No, he didn't. <laughs> but he could tell me every time I had company. He could tell me the make and the model on down to the license plate of the car that was in my driveway. But I enjoyed it. Really had company then, I just began to smile. <laughs> what a pleasure it was to be his friend and to be his fellow member. My service is concluded. This is the conclusion of my service, but I want to say to this family, thank you for allowing me to serve you. I'm going to continue to keep you in prayer. Amen. It's difficult to say, but I know. I know what you're going through. But I know God who knows it all. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a solo by Sister Xavier Clark, who is my daughter, and I taught her very well. <laughs> if she did good, I taught her. If she do bad, she got from my mom. <laughs> she's a little bit under the weather, but she's going to do the best she can. And so after she has come and after she has uh, some, the next voice she will hear by way of preaching will be our pastor, Pastor William Alvin, the Tran, Pastor Reverend George Arthur Terry, who's the pastor of the St. Paul Michigan <laughs> Baptist Church. So please, man, please, sir, be prayerful for this family as we continue on.
stop, look, and listen. Because I think about even on the day, Brother Melvin and the whole betraying family and my hope to God be glory. I want to think about, think about who celebration this is going on this weekend. Dr. Martin Luther King. That tell us something. Because I never forget Dr. King used to tell us, he said, don't ever call me Dr. Martin Luther King without putting the rebel on my name first. He said, because I was a rebel before I was a doctor. Hello, y'all. I'm just trying to school you all for a while. But I want you all to know this evening, church, we have to stop and look and listen. Look at our race killing each other like we mad, angry. On the other hand, we're doing this Ku Klux Klan job. Hello, y'all. I've got to ever tell you the truth. It used to be a time when they would take a rope and hang us, but now we they bringing the guns in and we are uh, just killing our church. Hello. And we go to church each Sunday. It's a church that's about on every corner. But yet, our people still dying. What is not dying from shooting with a gun, they're dying from disease. Why? Because most of the people say, well, I ain't going to take the shot because they don't put something in it. Sure they put something in it. They need to put something in you too. <laughs> Hello, y'all. See, it's time to wake up and realize that we are going to the moon now. We are going out in space. We got everything that we need. The Holy Spirit and the Word of God have already told us, I shall supply all of you, Lord. not some of you. But the Word also tells us that I come, that you have life, and that you have it more abundant. Don't want you to have a little bit, want you to, a little more, say a whole heap of stuff. So I stop by to tell you all, and I don't want to say black men, because we're God to raise the creative color. We all are men, but men, the word of God says a man will leave his mother and father for his wife. And do what? Leave. So I'm here to tell you, it didn't tell the woman to leave her mother and father. It said the man will leave his mother and father. And cling to his wife, and they will no more or no longer be two, but one. Anything you love, you ain't gonna beat on. Right. Hello, y'all. Stop by here just a little while. Right. Because, see, we need some help. Yeah. And see, and the word of God is crying out all through the Bible. I'm sending you some help. Yeah, I'm send it. I know. A lot of times we go to church and we can't come back on Monday. I like we've been to church on Sunday. But every day is Sunday. We'll be there. Find by according to the scripture. Yeah, yeah. And I believe the scripture before I believe you. Amen. So what I'm saying to uh, to you this evening, get right and let's go home like we'll be. Yeah. William was ready to go home. Well, yeah. William was someone that just wouldn't talk, but he would walk. Right. Hello, y'all. Right. And you know we have taught our children, even a lot of us sitting right in here, have taught our children, I don't need you. Yeah, I need you, and you need me. Right. The word of God said so, and the word of God is true. Yeah. So I'm here to tell you all this evening, stop, look, and listen. Yeah. And then I can say this to the end, and let's go home. But you need something else. Oh, yeah. You need to make up in your mind, I'm not going back home and be the same old way. I'm going to be a new person. Amen. Why? Because the 
word of God let us know that when I get to heaven, I'm going to have a new walk. Yeah. I'm going to be able to have a new talk. Yeah. See, I'm going to have a new song. Yeah. I'm going to have a song that the angels can't even yeah. sing. Yeah. And you don't think that the God that I serve right. will do something for me. Right. You had the wrong place. Right. Because Jesus done told us, he said, I'm coming back at the church without a spot or a rank. Go on the hand now. If you got a rank, you all know how you get rankers in your clothes. You don't even want to wear it. So now why you want to wear it? I mean, carry a church around here. Got a rank. So it's time for us to get right, church. And let's go home. But also, I want to say to you all, it's time for us. To let somebody see that I am a child of God. Yeah. Well, how can you do that, Brother Tweet? First of all, the eye, the light of your body is in your eye. Right. Don't look at people like you're a football player. Don't look at somebody like you who goes to the room. You ought to smile. Right. Every morning, you ought to say, Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. And I'll never forget how I, my brother, and I know St. Paul had heard this before. We went in the road and my mother told me, he said, don't take your brother here. Came down to D.C. and she knew he would get a little tipsy. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I said, oh, I'm going to take him with me. And I took him with me. With him. I, I took him with me. Walked me in the road and he tipped his hat and said, good morning, ma'am. And she looked at him. And he said, hmm, I don't blame you, ma'am. The good Lord left me out like that. I'll be mad at you. <laughs> Come on, y'all. But I'm here to tell you, it's time for us to realize that you got to put something in to get something out. The other hand, since he served the kingdom of God and all that other is going to be added to it. Yeah. It says, seek ye kingdom and the kingdom of God, and it is righteousness yeah. right. in all of us. Oh, right. yeah. okay. yeah. yeah. So I don't know about you, but I'm tired of living off the crumb. Yeah. And I want to tell you, we got two ages. You got one, you can go to heaven. And the other age, you can go to the other. I don't want nobody to tell me where you are, because I ain't going there. Yeah. I love y'all. But I want you to know that if you want something from the Lord, you got to go through the cemetery. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You got to go through the cemetery. Yeah. Because the word of God, if you just heard me read it, said that it's going to come a time when everybody in the grave will get up. But they have to go through the cemetery because the flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen. So I'm here to tell you, we don't have to go through the cemetery. And you know what? Every one of us in here today is going through the cemetery. That's the only way we can get to see Jesus. And I want to see his face. And I know the same song about the first place I want to see would be Jesus. Yeah. I want to see my mother, I want to see my father, sister, brother, I want to see all my family where I can tell you, you made it and so did I. Yeah. But I say to you all today, God loves you and will love you. Yes, he if you want to really do something for a people will today, everyone in here that don't know Jesus Christ is your personal oh. Savior. If you would tell the preacher today, I'm going to join church. I didn't say come to church. I want you to come to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Too many yeah. people are telling people come to church. Come on. I don't want to come to church. They will come to church too. Yeah. I want to come, to come to Jesus. Yeah. And whatever church you want to get involved with, I'll make sure somebody in here will come back and preach it. I don't care where he is. We will find. So don't leave today without knowing. Mm -hmm. See, and some of us are not coming back 
church again uh, to the sanctuary unless somebody go home. And I'm saying this because I love you and Amen. I want you to know this before Amen. I get my seat. Amen. See, one thing we got to remember about the Lord. He did not make hell for you and I. Oh, right. He made hell for us. All right. You all know the devil and his name. Yeah. Yeah. And the devil ain't nothing but a counterfeit. And what he done done right now, he make you believe that you will be, you can do a little wrong and go to heaven. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can't die all your eyes and cross all your teeth, but you can go to heaven. But the only way you can go, you got to make up in your mind. I'm going if I have to go by myself. So I'm telling you today, before I take my seat, I'm going to heaven. I'll see you there. But I hope and pray to God that you realize you got to stop, look, and listen. Come on to church. Don't let the hurt bring you to church. Come on and bring yourself. My time is up. Thank God for your time. to know 